One more law, Mr. Sanders, okay. Dalton's law of partial pressure. When this is it, the sum of the partial pressures is equal to the total pressure. Right. So if we have multiple gases yep. in the same container, the total pressure in the container is equal to the partial pressure of each of those gases added together. So we could actually put that mathematically, like I right. have right here. Yep. The total pressure is equal to the pressure of gas A plus the pressure of gas B plus the pressure of gas C, and if there's a D or an E, the same yeah. thing. So if you've got a gas in an enclosed container, you have gas A, which I'll symbolize by black dots, and then gas B by red dots, and we can add the total pressure. Probably be easier if we kind of saw this in a different way, Mr. Yeah. Sims. I think we got a kind of a video clip we could probably show them. Yep. So let's show them this video clip. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure here. Now in here I have 15 of these black balls here, and um, let's assume they're a gas, and the gas, the molecules are going to be flying around striking the edge of the container, the inside of the container. Now I'd shake them around a whole lot, but I did that a minute ago when we were testing it out, and um, I broke a, a very expensive flask. So uh, I'm not going to shake it so much. I'm just going to roll them around, implying that the molecules are moving and So where are around. they moving, Mr. Sams, um, they're, if they're gas? If they're gas, they're flying around at random and striking the inside of the container. Okay? So they're going up and down, up and not, and just, down. not just around right, the right. swirls. Right, All over the place. They're yeah. just psh, random motion. Okay. Now in here I have 10 of the yellow ones. Okay. 10, Again, okay, okay. moving around in random motion, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to break into the flats. Okay. So let's just say then that these 15 are exerting a pressure of 15 torr. And these 10 are exerting a pressure of 10 torr. And we just want to combine them together. So I'm going to pour the 10 into the 15. I could have poured the 15 into the 10. It doesn't really matter. Okay? Now, again, they're zooming around at random, striking the inside of the container. Now, the combined pressure is simply adding the two pressures together. We had 15 from the black ones, 10 from the yellow ones. So now we have a total of 15 plus 10, 25 torr in this container. Uh, because we simply add the two together, assuming they have the same volume of container and we're at the same temperature, you just add the pressures together. Dalton's law partial pressure. Each one exerts a partial pressure, and together their pressures are added. You just add them up. That's it. Oops, Mr. Sams, yeah, you uh, broke the, uh, I broke flask. the flask. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, it was only. 25 bucks. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, well. Just take it out of my paycheck. There we go. So the video clip helped me understand that. So here's kind of a way to kind of look at it mathematically. So here we have um, a gas. We have 0.6 moles of hydrogen gas in this container, and it, and it has a uh, particular pressure, okay? A pressure of uh, 2.9 atmospheres. Okay. And they can measure that with the weights on the top here. And then we have 1.5 moles of helium gas, and um, there's uh, more moles of gas, so therefore more pressure, and they have a pressure of 7.2. And now if you mix the gases, this third picture, they're mixed together. Um, now we have the 0.6 and the 1.5. We end up with 2.1 moles. And uh, we keep the, the volume the same. We now have 10.1 atmospheres. Now, folks, you hopefully you realize if you take 2.9 plus 7.2, it equals 10.1. And again, same volume and same temperature. Right. It's important. If you change the temperature or the volume, it will change the values. Okay. I think we should probably uh, do one example here. Okay. So um, air is made of 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. If the total pressure is 610, what is the partial pressure of each gas? Okay. So now, we've got the total. We've got that equation, P total, P tot, equals the pressure. Now watch how I write this. I say P of O2. Mm -hmm. I use a subscript, and I'm going to write this symbol oxygen plus P N2. N2. But I, I can't really add them because I just have percentages. We have percentages. Okay, so let's do, do that. well, what, just take 21% of 610 and then 79% okay. of So Okay, good. Of so if I've got 610 torr, a millimeter mercury is equal to torr, mm -hmm. and I times it by 20% or 21%, folks, that's actually 0 0.21 when you do that. It's Oops. a decimal. So we don't probably need to show you the calculator, but Mr. Yeah. Sams is fiercely typing. And 128.1. Uh, 128.1 so, so that's the pressure being exerted by oxygen. So that's the pressure of O2. And if I then take 610 torr, and I times it by 0 0.79, that's 79% rendered as a decimal, mm -hmm. I'm going to get 481.9. 481.9 torr. And that's the pressure of the nitrogen. Just for grins, if you were to take these two numbers and add them up, what would you get? 610. 610 torr. So if you've got a percentage, you've got to be a little bit more creative. But it really is the same principle. Right. You just have to understand the concept of how percentages work, guys. Yep. It's really not terribly difficult. Now, we need to kind of end with one thing.
One of the most important applications of Dalton's Law is when we're collecting a gas, which we're going to be doing in an experiment. Or, or two or three. Or three <laughs> or ten. Uh, lots yeah. of experiments for the rest of the year. So when you collect a gas over water, you need to subtract what's called the water vapor pressure because there are two gases. Now, let's take a look at a, a picture here that will help us illustrate that. So in this particular flask, I have sulfuric acid, I guess, and zinc. When they react, they produce hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas goes through the tube. We've collected gases before, right, ladies and gentlemen. And it produces the hydrogen gas, and it fills this up. Now, the key thing to understand is in this flask, as it sort of says here in the picture, there's both hydrogen gas and water gas, mm -hmm. better known as water vapor. And so when you're doing math for Wait, this. where did the water come from? Well, since it's bubbling for the water down here, um, some of that water will evaporate. Right. We're basically dealing with the vapor pressure of water is yes. what we're working with there. which we've talked about in, in the last unit. Right. And so there's some vapor pressure. So we need to essentially get rid of that because you see the total pressure will be equal to the pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the pressure of the water in this case. Right. And when we're collecting gas, we're only concerned with the pressure of the gas we're generating. And typically, we're only interested in this value. Now, the total pressure can be read from a barometer. Yeah, so whatever the atmospheric pressure is outside, we'll teach you how to equalize the tube later on so that uh, the pressure inside the flask is equal to the pressure outside, and so the pressure are the same. So let's take a look at this. Here it is in the way to look. Here's, um, yeah, we don't need that. This is what I want. So if I have, um, this is called the water vapor pressure table, and you're going to have this in your packet, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to cut it cut out. Cut it out, paste put, it in your comp book. Paste it in your it's comp also book. on our cupboard, so you can look it up in the room. Yeah, lots of, lots of places you're going to have access to it. So if you know the particular temperature, let's say you're at 20 degrees Celsius, then the vapor pressure is 17.5. This is in tor, by the way, or millimeters of mercury. Uh -huh. So if I uh, go back to my picture here, so let's say you're at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's say that we go to our barometer, we find the pressure is 590 torr, which would be pretty typical in Woodland Park. Okay, most of, if you're watching this somewhere else, you probably have a torr typically 760. You're probably closer to sea level. We live way above sea level. So um, if we are at uh, 20 degrees Celsius, I would look that up on that table. Mm -hmm. And that number was 17.5. So the pressure of the water is 17.5. So you subtract. We'll just say 18 for sig fig fig. And so, so this is the total pressure. This is the pressure of the water. And if you subtract that, you'll get the pressure of the hydrogen. 572. It's just 572 torr. And why is that important? When you take this number, the 572, you're going to use that in your equation with Pivner, P, or ideal gas law, P yeah. equals nRT. You're not going to use the 590. No. You're going to use the 572. And actually, you'll have to convert that to atmospheres or whatever. And we'll right. talk about that mm -hmm. in the next podcast. But you have to subtract the water pressure. And it is a application of Dalton's Mr. Johnny law. Dalton's law. Of breaking the flasks. Yes, the Dalton's law of breaking the flasks. Mm -hmm. So, hey, I think we're done with this podcast, Mr. Sands. Yeah, good thing, because i got some glass to clean up. Yes, all right. Well, <laughs> good. Bye.